There is many aircraft throughout history that have famously stood the test of time and served for over half a century with various countries and undergoing many upgrades throughout their life. But only one is characterized by its massive engine that allows it to accelerate quickly to crazy top speed. Only one was hailed by its pilots who flew it for its incredible high-speed maneuverability. A plane with an incredible radar for its time despite not being designed to carry radar missiles in the first place. A plane so popular with allies of the US that it was exported to half of the world, most famously to Italy, Japan and Taiwan, who were some of the last to retire it. That's right, I'm talking about the F-16 Fighting Falcon, bitches. The F-16A Falcon and its full house of variants are the latest 12.0 top-tier fighters for dispensing Western freedom using the US tree, Chinese tree, Israeli tree, Japanese tree, and the Italian tree. This provides two important values to the top tier of War Thunder. First of all, it finally provides a competitive top-tier aircraft with BVR and CAS capabilities for people grinding China, Japan, Italy, and not Israel. <laughs> And second of all, it bolsters the American top tier lineup since America clearly suffers and clearly needed yet another fourth generation fighter aircraft. So, if you were one of those people back then who thought that the MiG-23 MLD was the most broken thing ever, because it retains energy well and has six good missiles, then write your angry coping comments down below while you can and put on your pads because the F-16 will make you absolutely wet. Let's talk about the plane now. First off, let's differentiate the variants because oh boy, there's approximately one metric shitload of them. You know shit is fucked when the variants section on the F-16's Wikipedia page links to a whole other Wikipedia page just about the F-16 variants. Okay, so in War Thunder, there are three main variants of the F-16A in game as of this video. The Block 10, the Block 15, and the Block 20. The largest and most important difference between these variants is that the Block 10 is a lot lighter than the Block 15 and the Block 20, which allows it to retain energy far better in flight and dogfight a lot better than the other variants. There's also other major differences, and these main differences can be used to identify the different blocks apart. The main differences is that the Block 10 has smaller elevators and more ground ordnance usually. The Block 15 and the Block 20 have the larger dogfighting elevators and the ability to use radar missiles for the most part and the Block 20, currently only in the Chinese tree, is the MLU, having a distinguishable larger tail boom with a drag chute, something all of the other F-16s in-game lack. But there's also some outliers to these, which we're not gonna cover. The F-16A can best be summarized as a direct development of the F-5E and the F-104s that come before it in the American tech tree, and rather a very deadly combination of the two, almost like a perfect love child from these two aircraft combining the lightweight, aggressive dogfighting versatility of the F-5E with the absolute unit of an engine providing insane thrust, like the F-104. But we'll get to all of that in a bit. For now, let's get some important things out of the way first. Fighters in top-tier jet battles of War Thunder can be easily categorized into one of three groups. The first group is aircraft that may or may not be good at dogfighting, but can still fuck people up at close range with their incredible dogfighting missiles. The second group is aircraft with great dogfighting capability, but with a lack of danger noodles, or maybe less missiles than the other top tier aircraft get, forcing these planes to get up close and personal with guns. The third group of aircraft excel at long range engagements, or BVR, single handedly forcing you to hug the deck for the entire first half of the match as they dump the entire goddamn space program at you from the other side of the map, forcing you to either roleplay stroke 3 dodging 6 Iraqi missiles at once, or get your bitch ass slapped back to the hangar with zero kills and a bigger repair cost. And this is where the F-16 begins to shine. See, this aircraft is not really restricted to any of the three categories, and depending on the model that you're flying, you can easily fit into all three of them at once. You have great close range missiles for dealing with enemies at close to medium ranges, and depending on the model, you also have radar missiles allowing you to deal in BVR as well, and doesn't matter what model you fly, you will always have good flight performance which will allow you to adapt this plane to any playstyle you have. 
But wait, the F-16 maneuvers as well as the goddamn space shuttle on final approach and has to turn the circle of an entire EK map. You may be asking. And to that I say, learn how to manage your speed, you spasticated donkey. Does a plane that can very easily outright every other jet at top tier, with enough room to left to save your ass when you make an error, sound like a brick to you? Damn, the only brick here is that thing in your head that you mistook for a brain that even gave you the idea to say that shit. Listen closely, because now I'm going to teach you how to play Mr. Worldwide Falcon. Here is how you play Pierre Space Crotch Rocket. Step 1. Learn what the fucking air brake is. This isn't some witty joke or shitty hint, I'm serious. Please. I, I beg you. What the fuck? How can you guys be this fucking autistic? Holy shit. You need to learn weight and speed management. Your F-16 has the best turn rate of any top tier aircraft in game at optimal conditions, but that does not mean that this is unconditional. As with any aircraft in War Thunder, how it handles will depend on your speed and weight. The amount of dumbass stock F-16s with bombs who don't know how to use their air brakes trying to turn fight a phantom then crying when they lose eh, that I end up running into is hilariously sad. So I'm just going to give you the answers because you guys are clearly suffering. From brain damage that is. Your optimal dogfighting speed is between 600 and 800 kilometers per hour under an optimal combat load. That would be 380 to 500 McDonald's per Hardee's for my fellow Americans who cannot use proper measurement units. At this speed, your energy retention and thrust keep you easily outrating any plane you can face in the game right now. If you fight any slower, planes with higher AOA at low speed, like the MiG-29 and the Vigan, will absolutely shit on you. And if you fly at a higher speed, planes with better high speed alpha, like the Tomcat and the MiG-21, will easily clap your cheeks in. And if you are dying to a MiG-21 in your F-16, then go back to fucking Pakistan. Step 2. Maintain Situational Awareness Your plane is best used up close and personal. You are not a BVR bus. This is the F-16 bitch we clown in this 9G sustained turn. Better take your missile flinging pussy ass back to the Tomcat. But with close range comes great responsibility. You must always maintain situational awareness. By maintaining situational awareness and occasionally looking behind you, you are instantly better than 90% of players at top tier jets. Most troglodytes flying at top tier jets have such a smooth brain, you can probably slide a belly landing on it with no damage to the plane whatsoever. Their two cognitive molecules that they mistook for a brain revolve solely around the first enemy that they see, which triggers a neuron activation causing them to lose all sense of what is happening around them and tunnel vision only on their kill. These are the kinds of autistic monkeys who you are learning to at top tier. You will get up close and personal to these guys. Launch an R60, watch them fail to flare the said R60 away, and then laugh at their ass, all while they're too busy looking at the plane in front of them. Then these idiots will go and cope on Reddit that the R60 is overpowered and that they need an AIM-9X Block 53 to kill a fucking MiG-21. Because they are fucking blind. Step 3. Profit. That's literally it. I won't talk about the minor quirky differences between the different variants, like the American Block 10 and the Israeli Nets not getting the radar missiles, or how the MLU in real life could carry AMRAMs, so uh, this review is probably going to be outdated by next update. Now, let's talk about modifications. See, I had to stock grind all of my F-16s before stock flares became a thing. And I started writing the script for this video nearly two months ago, so Gaijin decided to completely fuck me over and give everyone free stock flares while I was in the middle of writing this exact fucking section of the script. Which means that I only had to completely rewrite half of the goddamn script thanks to Gaijin. So now that Gaijin decided to pull their thumb out of their ass and finally started giving us free flares in addition to free missiles, your stock grind will be a lot easier. I personally went from stock to spaded in the F-16A ADF in about 3 hours, and stock flares weren't even a thing back then. Now let me remind you, your stock performance in the F-16 is still very good as a dogfighter, so please don't be a fucking retard who takes bombs on this thing to stock grind it. I stock grinded 5 different F-16s without dropping a single bomb, and 4 of those were before stock flares were a thing. So please, without further ado, here is the preferred modifications route for you to take in your stock modifications grind. Starting at tier 1, begin by rushing straight down the fuselage repair and compressor. 
Your F-16's stock flight performance may be good, but why settle for that when it can be the best? If you really suck at dodging radar missiles, or just retarded enough to keep climbing every game, you might want to also get chaff, but I personally wouldn't, now that normal flares are free and you don't really need anything more than that if you know what you're doing at top tier, but it's up to personal preference. If your F-16 has a tier 1 missile upgrade, such as the AIM-9Js, make sure to get that now as well. Next, you're going to want to start tier 2 with the G-Suit, trust me, you, you really want this thing. If your F-16 has radar missiles, make sure to grab that now, otherwise just get both performance modifications. Moving on to tier 3, you'll start by getting your AIM-9Ls. You need the AIM-9Ls, trust me, you'll love them. After this, you'll want to get both performance modifications once again. If you're up to tier 4 by now, start with the engine upgrade, unless you have the Israeli nets. You're gonna want to rush straight down to the Python 3s first. Those things are cracked. They're crazy, trust me. After that, get yourself the fire extinguisher, and from this point on, really, you can go back and work on whatever remaining modifications you want, in whatever order you want. You want CAS? Go ahead. You want just refine your flight performance even more? Sure. You're stupid enough and you want bombs? Uh, uh, go ahead. I, um, please don't be on my team next match. Of course, you can also go the pay-to-win route and just buy your modifications instantly with those golden weapons of mass destruction that you stole from the pesky Iraqis. And there you have it! That's a quick review and guide of the F-504 Star Tiger. <laughs> the quick review and guide of the F-504 Star Tiger that will almost definitely be outdated by next update. So until then, go out there, don't crash on takeoff, and teach all your enemies what happens when someone fucks with your oil supply. Oh, and if you enjoyed this new style of videos that I'm trying, then make sure to tell me down in the comments, or leave a like so I know. Don't worry. I'll still be making bad memes as usual, so expect more of those in addition to this shitty series now. You know what they say, twice the brain damage, twice the fun. See you next time.